The immediate reaction might be that it seems unnatural to consume a nutrient that has no calories, but is so much sweeter than sugar. And it just so happens that a study indicates it does have an effect on our brain. But is it really something to worry over? Non-nutritive sweeteners, NNS, like aspartame, saccharin, sucralose, and the like, are molecules that have a particular chemical structure that does not allow them to be metabolized to generate cellular energy, and therefore they do not produce calories. However, because of the distinct chemical structure, they tend to be as sweet or many, many times sweeter than plain sugar. In this case, we'll be focused on sucralose, a component of multiple popular foods and drinks from Splenda packets to diet sodas to sugar-free shakes and puddings and plenty more. In this study, researchers fed the same group of young men and women three different drinks separated by at least two weeks between the conditions. So one drink had just water, another was sucrose, sugar, and the final is obviously sucralose, our non-nutritive sweetener of interest. Then the researchers performed a blood test and did a series of brain scans as well as measured hunger. Now, the reason this study is important is because many people consume non-nutritive sweeteners to avoid the calorie burden from certain foods and drinks and to still somewhat satisfy the feelings of sweetness that one might want. However, animal studies have shown that these calorie-free sweeteners stimulate hunger by interfering with the usual neural responses to food consumption and even sugar consumption. Specifically, the region of the brain heavily implicated in hunger, and there are specific blood flow changes that occur that have a relationship to feelings of hunger. Specifically, sugar and likely other foods reduce the activation of the hypothalamus by reducing blood flow to the region of the brain. That relates to reduced hunger. So let me quickly clarify here that the researchers aren't saying that sugar is a satiating nutrient relative to other nutrients. They're simply saying that compared to consuming nothing, sugar reduces hunger. But you don't need to take my word for it. They show data that we'll go get into as well. First, what effect did these three drinks have on the hypothalamus? Here we have images from a connectivity analysis. That means that we're looking at imaging of the hypothalamus and the connections displayed in color to other regions of the brain. So if there's more yellow and red, there's a greater connectivity in that region. Then we see the three comparisons. So sucralose, our non-nutritive sweetener, compared against sucrose, sugar. Then the same sucralose versus water, and then sucrose, sugar, versus water. Clearly, there are differences with sucralose compared to against other conditions. But what about the blood flow that we discussed? Remember, the relationship is reduced blood flow in the hypothalamus is related to reduced hunger. Looking at that data, we see that the hypothalamic response, meaning increased blood flow on the vertical axis, if it goes up, that means more activity, more blood flow. You can see the three conditions below. The individual puncta are the results of each participant, and the black dot is the average result. So comparing the conditions, we see the sucralose leads to greater hypothalamic blood flow activity compared to sucrose or water. I'd even argue that we should change how that's described because it seems to me that the sucralose condition maintains activity while the other two reduce it, since the values for sucralose sit around the zero or baseline mark there. We'll look into further evidence of that, but what we really need to know if this leads to changes in actual hunger. Before that, there's additional data on the different uh, effects that based on people's body weight. And if you're interested in full analyses across all my work, consider joining the Physionic Insiders. That includes live sessions with me, cheeseburgers, lettuce, tomato on... Wrong script, sorry. Uh, that was my lunch order. It includes written research reviews, simplified protocols and guides, a once a month podcast that covers everything that you need to know and more. The link to join the insiders is in the description box. I hope to see you there. So here are the data on hunger along with more on the hypothalamus activity and effects on blood glucose sugar levels. The red condition is the sucralose, blue is sugar or sucrose, and the green is water. As seen, although poorly, in the previous data, the hypothalamic response is more so reduced in the water and sucrose conditions than there's really an increase in the sucralose condition. But both do occur. As predicted, 
only the sucrose condition showed an increase in blood glucose over time, which speaking to the time element, for some reason, the researchers used one, two, and three as markers of time, but those actually correspond to 10 minutes post baseline, 35 minutes post baseline, and 120 minutes post baseline. Okay, now hunger. Fascinatingly, the water and sucralose conditions seem to follow a similar hunger experience. They both increase, but not really differently from one another, which tells us a key piece of information. Before that, the other comparison, sucrose, also shows an increase in hunger over time, but the effect is blunted over time compared to the other two conditions. So this tells us that sucralose, while it might create differences in the activity of the brain, especially the hypothalamus and regions therein, there is no added hunger effect compared to consuming water. A more appropriate conclusion would be to say that sucrose, so sugar, reduces hunger slightly in a way that sucralose does not. Then again, that isn't much of a shock, considering that sucrose also elevates blood glucose levels and has calories, all of which have separate hunger reducing effects. If we zoom out, however, the researchers point out that there's mixed evidence on if sucralose and non-nutritive sweeteners as a whole affect weight, which would be a telltale sign of overeating. Some associative studies indicate that there is a correlation between increased non-nutritive sweetener consumption and increased body weight, but most randomized controlled trials indicate either a neutral or opposite effect, so greater consumption leads to reduced body weight. So, this can get pretty confusing. As it stands, the stronger evidence suggests that non-nutritive sweeteners do not lead to weight gain. I'd also add that uh, although sucralose did show changes in the brain, that are not seen with sucrose or even water, the hunger effects were in line with water consumption and the effects relative to sucrose were mild. And in the grand scheme of an entire diet, I have my doubts this would actually make a huge difference, especially since there isn't an additive hunger effect, just a lack of hunger repression. So in short, Yes, sucralose leads to changes in the brain, but no, it doesn't lead to an unreasonable outsized increase in hunger when compared against a proper control in the study. Everyone is different, but these data on average do not indicate a strong reason to reduce sucralose consumption. Look, I like you. I might even like like you. So would you want to go on a date with me to the next video?